What a win. And then, boy, do we have a whole lot more to talk about the Steelers. But let's just pretend we don't know what happened to Sean Watson. <laughs> and let's enjoy the fruit of what was a victorious, victorious victory. Tony Camino there. I'm Andy Billman here. Uh, Tony, there's been big wins against the Oilers, who are no longer the Oilers. They're now the Titans. There's been big wins over the Bengals. And there's certainly been big wins over the Steelers in even moments. I can't remember a bigger one against the Ravens in my years on this planet. Now that was the biggest win I can remember as a Browns fan beating the Ravens. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I mean, even obviously only 23 years of life for me, but in right. terms of regular season wins, number one, like number one, the only one that even rivals it was week 17 against the Steelers to go to the playoffs, but that didn't have the same feel because it was against Pittsburgh's backups. We had to win that game. Right. This one, we didn't really have to win it. It kind of was like, if we win it, we're making a statement. If we lose it, we'll recover. But this one, this one is the most significant win of my lifetime in the regular season. And it felt really good to get done. It really did. It was an exciting victory. There was a, it was a back and forth. And the way the game started was, you know, typical in a way, um, you know, the pick six, it's just rankled. Looked like the Ravens were just going to roll. Even when the Browns scored, the Ravens returned with the field goal, make it 17, three. But it's just an amazing um, patience. The Newsom play obviously was huge. Oh, there's so many plays, but we're going to get to a few of them here in the show. It was, again, it's the most memorable win for me, too. I can't remember. I'm not saying it's the best win. It's, I think the Pittsburgh wild card win will always be special. But gosh, this is a close second. I mean, I think it's better than run William Run, to be honest with you. All right, you've named this mesh rail. So what are we seeing here, Tony? So this... A lot of people in Madden know this play, but even in the NFL level, this is the one of the most popular plays all offenses run. It's called Mesh Rail, and it, it's those two crossing routes across the middle of the field with the rail route from the running back, which is or a wheel route, whatever you like to call it. Right. Very good against man coverage. Has ways to beat other coverages too, but they get the Browns in man coverage here. And not to harp on the Browns' defense because they've been amazing, but right. this is something that I've noticed, all the people have noticed, they got to work on going forward. So – First of all, this is you can see they're in man coverage, and this is this is a good job from the middle of the field. JOK was just playing the whole defender, right. so his responsibility was just taking away anything in the middle. He quickly realizes that Emerson is not going to be able to get to the receiver. I believe it's Bateman because Andrews is going to like set a natural pick on him, and he's going to be wide open. So JOK does a great job taking over his role, and then Emerson will then take over the whole route, the whole role in the middle. And so that's beautifully done handling those crossers in the middle of the field. That wasn't the issue with this play. What the issue was, Keaton uh-huh. Mitchell gets one-on-one in space with Sione Takitaki. And I like Takitaki, but there's not many linebackers in this league. He, Keaton Mitchell is very fast. We saw that on Sunday. He, and this is probably the third, fourth, maybe fifth straight week outside of the Cardinals game where we've seen a wheel route out of the backfield from the running back get wide open. And this was a great throw from Lamar. It probably should have been a touchdown. And it's something to keep our eyes on because now I know the Colts had one against us that worked. Seahawks yep. ran one against us that should have worked. So teams are noticing it. It's really good against man. You get a speedy running back in space against a linebacker. So what the biggest thing that I'm bringing it up for is they need to find a better answer consistently going forward for that. Because you know teams are going to see that. I would expect Jalen Warren's going to get one of those looks this week against them. When they know they're in man, they're going to, because he's the more explosive pass catcher on that team. And they've got to have better answers for it than just asking Taki Taki to cover it. Because honestly, every time he's tried to cover it, it's been beat. It's just been a matter of have the offense converted or not. But other than that, they handled it well. Yeah. I mean, there's always, well, let me just say this too. Mark Andrews really makes that play. And why I say that is he's a very good player. There are players that don't, pick well it's the same in basketball but certainly the same in football where guys don't sell it mark can really sell it and he puts so much attention on him that i think sometimes players overthink about mark and then when you add a speedy receiver like that who can zip right down the field to your point i mean it's it causes problems really they have one i mean tony you'd be better than i would but they really only have jok there's really not another guy with speed and linebacker it's just yeah, really not. not. Not with anything you'd want in that situation. And it's just really um, – I'd chalk it up more to a good offensive play calling, getting the right call at the right, right time. I mean, there's not much you can do. You got a slower linebacker in space. There was nobody else's 
there to help but him. And it's just something to keep an eye on going forward. I'd like them to find better answers to covering that than just having Taki Taki try to handle it because we got burnt on it in the Colts game. And if they continue to cover it like this, I would expect it could have been burnt in this game. And if that ball is caught, that's probably game. So I'd yeah. like to see better answers. Yeah, you're right. I mean, my one note I'd say there is that's where the pass rush really helps because that play takes not a lot, but takes a little time to develop. So if you get the quarterback quickly, it snuffs out everything. Again, to me, as a neutral observer, never played the game. Andrews causes a lot of problems because he sets a good pick and he, you have to focus on him. He's a capable tight end. So God forbid you don't actually have so, – so you have to focus on him naturally because he can catch. And on top of it, he's doing a great job distracting. It's hard. And then, again, the, the Browns don't really – the Browns linebackers aren't bad, but they aren't great, and they aren't fast. Outside JOK. JOK is not bad. But Taki Taki, Anthony Walker, these aren't guys that are really known for their speed. Right. Just not. And, and so because of that, it creates for an unfavorable matchup. The nice thing in this game is really um, the young running back, uh, forgive me, the name of the running back, Martin. Is his name Keaton Mitchell. Mitchell. Mitchell is a stud. He's light. So if you hit him hard, you, you probably will get him out of there. Um, and that's really the key to those kind of guys. I mean, we've had those kind of guys too on our teams throughout the years. It's a good play call. It's good you brought it up. Because the Browns have had trouble with those plays. Mm -hmm. Or a little scat back just gets, I mean, loose. And honestly, tight ends, Tony, has been a problem for years. Yeah. Well, um, which we, we didn't focus on that play, obviously. All right, this play you have named Tillman. Right. So Tillman had a good game for a receiver who didn't get a single catch. And... <laughs> oh, explain to us, Tony. How is that possible? <laughs> so when DPJ got traded, the biggest concerns, it wasn't really – replicating that receiving production because DPJ wasn't doing much right. in the pass catching. Um, but what Stefanski does a lot, which is why a lot of receivers don't like playing in this system. He asked them to block and not only block, he asked them to block big guys. And so here the Browns split zone. So we've covered this before. It's where all the linemen are blocking zone blocking to one side. And right. usually it's a tight end. will come back aside the formation and pick up the first defensive end off the line. This has become probably their most successful run play. They do it all the time they really made a living on it you see tillman here that's jadavian Clowney, and that's cedric it's tillman a receiver big coming big across big. and setting the edge on him and wow. he didn't blow him back but he held his own and really the play dies if he doesn't make that block and then jerome ford the rest i'd like jerron christian to do a better job climbing here on patrick queen because he ends up making the tackle but it still got five to seven yards and if we can run and get five to seven every play we're going to have a lot of success so to see Tillman, I mean, everybody saw on TV when he laid out Kyle Van Noy. Right. And But to do things like this, this was my biggest concern was, was he going to be able to handle all the blocking on the big boys like DPJ did? And this game showed that he could do that. And really it adds another wrinkle to the run game because yeah. when usually we run that type of run play with Ninjoku off the line of scrimmage in the court, like in the line of scrimmage. So you can kind of get a tell. The defense can kind of – all right, we've seen a joke who lined up there. This is probably coming. When you motion Tillman in and do it, you're not really expecting it as much because most teams aren't asking their receivers to block defensive ends. So when it's just another really nice wrinkle we have to a run play that has become one of the go-tos for the Browns this year. They're doing a great job. Usually the Browns forever, I talk about this a lot, they did. They ran sweep left, sweep left, sweep left. Chubb must have loved that or something. Is that was like a go-to, and actually, Cream Hunt does a lot outside the run tackles, which I wouldn't be doing anymore with with Hum with Kareem, but they do. Anyways, I like how they're running inside the guards, going more in the center. That's where their strength in their line is. It's really Teller and Petonio. Mm -hmm. So running up the middle makes a lot of sense. They they've done a great job there. It's refreshing because forever, really, the Browns were a team that ran really tackle to tackle. It didn't really do a lot inside. It's nice. It's good to see, and it's working. To your point, it's really working. And as for Tillman, you know, that's a very fair point. He's been getting criticized by some for his route running. I don't study enough film to see that. But the kid can block. Kid's tough. And he's certainly not small. And that's great. And that's big. That's what we need. We're a running team. It yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see him. He's not. He was never known to be the separator. He's kind of a big body, down the field, contested catch kind of guy. But... I'm, I think that receiving stuff will come. 
this offense doesn't really have the production for that many receivers, but he needs to be able to block his position to stay on the field. And he's been doing that in the couple games. He's got an extended role. Yeah. Again, I mean, this is a run team. Um, I said this all last week and the Steelers, it's similar. It's really though important against the Ravens. You have to win the run game. They won the run game. And the big reason why is blocks like that. This miles Garrett guy's good. I like him. I think we should yeah. keep him. Yeah. Let's talk about miles. He is special. I mean, it's every week that that case for a defensive player of the year, it's making it harder and harder for them not to just give it to him right now. So this is third and 17 earlier in the game. First half, I think it's 79 right after he had half a sack. Yep. Browns are showing a double mug front, which all that means is the two linebackers are pressed up at the line of scrimmage looking like they might be, they might blitz. They might not. And all it does is it causes a lot of hit, havoc for the offensive line. They end up dropping back in coverage. So this isn't a blitz. We're just bringing four and the Browns ran a twist on the left side of the offensive line of the Ravens, which they ended up picking up very well. But what you can't do is leave Miles Garrett one-on-one as he's throwing the right tackle here like a rag doll and making a play like he like he's not even there. You can't yeah. leave him one-on-one because he's going to make plays. He makes a huge sack on third and 17, knocks him out of field goal range, and another play that, in the grand scheme of things, probably can't complete the comeback or it becomes a lot more difficult if you don't make a play like this. This was huge. Right after the half sack, he had the play before. And then this was just Miles being Miles. I mean, it's a good play call to confuse the Ravens O-line and really force that one-on-one situation. But you still got to have a talented guy like Miles Garrett to just beat his blocker and get to the quarterback. And he continues to amaze every week. He is very, very good. And I just talked about this with the running back, Mitchell. Andrews on this play is open. So if Miles does not get to Jackson, it's probably going to Andrews here. And I don't know if it's a first down, but it's probably field goal time. It's third and That's, 17, so probably not a first down. Probably not a first down, but a field goal. I mean, you can just – Yeah, with Justin goal. Tucker, yeah. With Justin Tucker. So, you know, we talked about this before. I want to go back to this player here. You can see there's a little bit of separation. Sorry, and, and it's fair. Andrew's a good player. But when you give pressure on the quarterback from Miles Garrett, it eliminates all this stuff. And that's why, like, it's so – I got taught this by Ernie Corsi. Great Browns general manager in the 80s, general manager for the Giants uh, for Eli Manning in the early 2000s. Pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. It takes away plays like this. Yep. I want to go back to one more time. If there's no pass rush, Andrews is getting this ball. Again, I don't think he's getting the first down either, but he's going to get a field goal opportunity. Because you have Miles Garrett, it takes away everything. Changes it. He is such a such a special player. Can't, can't say yeah. enough. Yeah, and this other guy, yeah, you can't say enough. And there's another special guy. And they've got a – well, you want to talk about some articles and believe in land that I will be writing? I'm sure – I don't know. I'll speak for Tony, but I hope he writes the same. we got to figure out how to give Cooper back. We've got to bring him back next year. He, yeah. He's outstanding. My gosh. Yeah, he was a, that fifth-round pick for him. You do that a million times over. This yeah. is last drive of the game right after Wyatt Teller gets on the fumble because both tackles got beat horribly. Yeah. So we're in, we're behind the sticks. We're at second and long on the last drive of the game. And you get the Ravens in what they call cover six or quarter, quarter, half, a variation of it. So the two safeties on the right side or the two route side are playing like half. They're playing a quarter deep zones. And then the, on the Cooper side to the right of Deshaun, they're just playing half like cover two techniques. And Cooper's just running a deep curl route, which is the best route to beat this type of coverage. I don't really know what happens on the left side of this play. The spacing gets really weird. I'm not. I don't think that was what they intended for, but it. That's how it worked out. Luckily, it didn't end up mattering. But they run a variation of it where they have a guy run with Cooper, almost like they're playing this with an additional guy just manning up Cooper. Right. And you see here, this is when Deshaun goes to throw the ball. The safety help over the top, and that defender is right on Cooper's hip. Right there. Yeah. This ball is. You can't place that ball any better. I mean, yeah. the anticipation, the placement, and then a great catch by Cooper. This is a second and 17 situation on the game winning drive. So that sets up third and two instead of third and 15 or third and 17 where, so if this catch isn't made, it's a lot more unreasonable that we're going to convert there and win the game. So really gets overlooked as probably the biggest play on that last drive that isn't being talked about. And that was Deshaun and Cooper's connection on full display. And it's a shame that we're going to have to wait till 2024 to see it again. Yeah. um, The teller fumble recovery which I talked about a lot, was huge. Yeah. And then you go to that play with Cooper. Big play. And the Ravens, again, the Ravens, I thought, did a nice job on Cooper. 
Cooper is that hot right now. And obviously Watson was really good in the second half. Um, there's a couple times where Cooper was open where he threw it. There's a lot of times like that where it's like, geez, that's pretty good coverage. Yeah. He just made a good throw. Mm -hmm. um, Cooper, you know, there's, I, again, like we forget about Nick Chubb because he's hurt. You cannot put a value right now on Cooper. I mean, you've got to bring him back. He is just so good, Tony. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Is he incredible. Having an incredible year. He really is. He's been so important to this offense, just his route running, his ability. And really this year it's been less of – I mean, he had his route running. He's always going to make plays. But his ability to just make contested catches this year and Deshaun getting him the ball right where it has to be, it it's really invaluable. He's been so important to being able to survive in life without Chubb. It's amazing. And then the play that everybody talked about afterwards and yep. all the highlights. All right, what happened here with Mr. Ford? And to yeah, we're going to see this Ford. play. We're going to be seeing this play for a long time. I mean, yeah, rightfully so. This was a great effort. This was yeah. – they call this power run. So all the linemen besides Batonio are blocking to their left, and Batonio is pulling out and kicking out the defensive end. And Batonio starts this off. This is a great job from Batonio pulling around and really setting the lane here for Ford. That, that's just – that's a great block, exactly what you want. And then Ford does a good job because this is good – this is solid blocking from the rest of them, but not amazing. Again, they didn't do a great job getting to the second level of their blocks, which is expected with the tackles. There's not a ton right. of space there. Right. And Ford's doing a good job bouncing around, finding the space, and he does a great job here getting a nice chunk. Even before the push, this is a nice six yards, seven yards on first. And be able to run the ball in this situation where we manage that clock per to perfection. Five minutes left. Yep. We don't want to give them even 20 seconds because it's Lamar Jackson and it's – Justin Tucker, who can make a field goal from who knows how long. So yep. to be able to run the ball here to make it an easier field goal and run clock was essential. And then this this is just pure effort, pure toughness, resilient, whatever the word you want to use, something I've never seen from a Browns team. This this yeah, There were plenty of hits in this game that showed it, but this kind of capped it all off. This is like the changing of the tie between the Browns and Ravens. Like So many times we'd seen them get punched in the face and they didn't get back up. This was a game where – the Browns were delivering the blows. And even when they were falling behind, they kept fighting and they kept fighting and they kept fighting. The Joku's run, so many instances. And that's that's just the kind of stuff that's going to allow the season to go on no matter what they're facing. I agree. Um, you know, forever in sports, certain teams um, just develop certain traits. And you, go, you can kind of plug. This year for the Browns, they are really a running team. I can't express it enough. And I agree with Tony. I thought the tackles were fine, but what was better was the game plan. Um, I thought the running attack and how they ran really helped alleviate situations, meaning they are in such a groove with this running game that even tackles that are okay, they're, they're, they're going to be fine with because they're in such a good groove with this running game right now where they're over, able to overtake it. Um, I've seen it with the Spurs in basketball. I've seen it at times, too, with the Cardinals and hitting. Like, there's a certain time it's like, look, if he hit anywhere else, he wouldn't be able to hit. If these tackles play on other teams, they'd probably be giving up a lot more runs and sacks. But the Browns are in such a role right now. And Callahan's got this line really playing well. And so because of that, you know, they can plug and play players that, Tony, truthfully, they're playing okay, but it's more the scheme. And it's more about how they're executing. And less about, like, one-on-one -on -one matchups, they're doing okay, but they're really – I mean, if you look at the pro football focus grades, their grades, the offensive line are average at best. Yeah. But they're really doing a great job as a unit. And that's a sign. And that's why I'm excited. I'll be honest with you. That's why I was so excited because it's like we're overcoming things because we're just playing well. Right. That's a great sign. Yeah, they're playing well. They're playing hard. And that's going to – their defense is playing so well that they're going to keep them in any game to begin with. So – a lot of good signs to go forward, even with everything that's happening. We saw some things here, and Tony did a good job pointing out even times where they weren't perfect, and yet that's why this win is so special. The Browns didn't even play their best game, and it was such a great win. Um, again, one of the most memorable wins I can ever remember. Check out Tony's column on BelieveInTheLand.com. He breaks down all these plays more thoroughly on the article. Always check out Tony's stuff and Believe in the Land here on YouTube and BelieveInTheLand.com. We'll be there next Sunday for the DTR show. See you then. All right, we'll do this in 15 seconds. I know you got to roll, and then we'll get right yep. into the Steelers. Uh, all right, 10 seconds. Oh, my gosh, I need an allergy pill bad. <laughs>
So fucking sucks. Here we go. Well, well, well. Sometimes you do a draft and you're like, that's a nice quarterback. We'll probably see him in three or four years. Boy, that's not the case here in Cleveland this year. This will be the DTR start two, part D. Tony Camino there. Andy Billman here against the Steelers. Tony, big start. My line is this. High risk, high reward. I get it. I think we kind of know what Walker is, so I understand it. Would I have gone with Walker against the Steelers? Probably yes, but I understand this move. I don't know if I would have done it. In fact, I know I wouldn't have, but I get it because I think we know what Walker is. What would Coach Tony Camino would have done in this situation? It, DTR. It was after we saw the last game from PJ when we lost in Seattle. I was on, we need to be, and commendable to PJ. He played in, led us to two wins, but there was just too much, too much turnovers, too many missed throws, too many missed reads. We know, like you said, we know what PJ is. Yep. And a lot of the quarterbacks that people wanted that are talking about, the names that are being thrown out there, we know what all those guys are. And those guys at their best is not taking this team where they want to go. So I'm not saying I think DTR is going to be the next coming of whatever underdog story we have, but we know he's talented and we know that we don't know what he can be. And so I would go with him. I think it's the right call. You don't want it to be against the Steelers, but the reason I think they didn't go with PJ right now is number one, they want DTR to just, all right, you're not, don't worry about it. Prepare for the rest of the season. You're the starter. And in yeah, addition to that, I don't think they wanted his first start again to be on the road. Well, right. I also think, too, there's just limitations with Walker. Um, and there's a very bad, dangerous thing with the, with the Steelers. Uh, we pointed out in our last film review, check it out on the Ravens, the tackles in the game against the Ravens did okay. And against the Steelers, <laughs> those ends mm -hmm. are good. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they're going to be tested in this game. Um, it's very big that DeWan Jones plays, by the way. Hopefully he was, he was limited on Thursday. So we take this on Thursday. So we're not quite sure if he's going to play or not. So my big thing with DTR is, again, I get it. Because they kind of need a lift. And Walker's not going to give that lift. And they have enough for running game. My big thing, and this is this is such a captain obvious, but I got to be captain obvious. DTR, stay within your lane. Make comfortable plays. Yes, run the ball. But do things you know where you get point A to point B. Don't worry about hero. Just make the plays. I will say this, Tony. They speak about this, and I take them at their word. Barry went on and on and on about the intelligence of DTR. What we're going to see it is we do need a smart quarterback in this spot. Yeah, and he played a lot of football at UCLA. He's got like yes, every he record there. Yes, He's got he a lot of experience. In a complicated system with Kelly. Right. Not, not like it's a basic system over there. And he is fast. Like, if you look mm -hmm. at the 40 times, he's pretty significantly faster than Deshaun. So this is a guy who can make plays with his legs. I'd like them to make that a focal point, kind of like we saw the Bears do last year with Fields, even yeah. kind of to an extent the way the Eagles do with Hurts. Cause confusion. Be run first, but involve the quarterback. Make Because it's just a simple numbers game. When the quarterback runs the ball, you've got 10 blockers. When the running back runs the ball – quarterbacks out of the equation you Agreed. only have nine blockers so if we can get dtr get Najoku the ball in space that's a big one yes get him the ball in space run the ball run the ball more with the quarterback i think we can be just fine on offense i'll say this i watched actually for one reason or another i watched dtr somewhat in college i watched a handful of games he's that he's that quintessential quarterback in college when he's hot he was hot he could really take over a game. He won against uh, LSU one year when he's a quarterback at UCLA. And that was an impressive win. They should not have beaten LSU. And I thought he was a big reason why. So he's talented. Um, he can get into space. I don't know if Watson even gets into space anymore. What I mean by that is like Jackson gets into space. He just gets into things and it's like, oh, he's gone. DTR can do that. I agree with you. Like if he gets into space, man, it is hard to catch him. So I think that brings that element in there. I just think the key to this game, Tony, and it, I, it just sounds so obvious, but again, I got to say it, field position, make 
Pickett beat you. Do not allow Watt to go off. Do not allow that silly and bad run. And Steelers are not a good running team. Thank God. It's not like we have Connor or Bettis to worry about. So there's like nothing like that in the backfield. Let Pickett win the game, which he can't. He can't do. Steel, this is only the Steelers' fourth road game, by the way. They played a lot of home games. So they, they're finally getting a chance to taste the road, too. Let that crowd get into it. Yeah, play clean football. And you, if you listen to all the way that DTR has been talking this week, that's been a point of emphasis. Clean football. Before anything, clean football. That's going to be yeah. – that's the that's the mantra for the rest of the year. And getting DeWan back is huge because I'm very nervous about the pass rush if we don't have DeWan. Oh, Hudson yeah. and Christian did fine. I think Christian played – about to the level of Jed Wills, Hudson, not as much. If we can, I'm fine with Christian on the left side. If we can get Dewan back, that makes me feel a lot better. And the run game for the Steelers hasn't been great. They did, they are coming off their best running game of the season, of course. Yeah, but uh, it was against the Packers. Packers so, are, oh. <laughs> right. Uh, it's, it's hard to grapple, and they were at home. So, yeah, it's just the simple things win up front on both sides, protect the football, and don't try to do too much because the defense is going to do you a lot of favors for us. And Make pick and beat you because I don't. I'm not comfortable that he will. I agree. I mean, I just think there's sometimes it's simple. It's the Steelers, so it's always a big game. This is a huge game, but it really is in the in the schedule sense. And here's why: again, the Steelers have a lot more road games coming up. So if you win this game, you kind of start putting them on a the point where it's like they have to go on the road again, and they and they finally go on these paths where they have to play all the AFC North teams on the road. As for the Browns. Yes, it's on the road, but at Denver, okay, winnable. They're getting a little hot, but okay. At L.A., I think they'll be in draft pick land by the time they get to L.A. So now it's like you can take that road trip and say you can split. Just win one. If you get two, which you may, you might be able to do. Holy cow, and then, Tony, you're talking seven, eight, nine, with five left to go, and one of those is against the Bears. Yeah, Tony, yeah. you're in playoff. I mean, that's why I kept saying to myself, Mike, if they can beat the Steelers, 11 wins is there. This is game is huge for the Browns. Huge for the Browns. Yeah, huge. especially what happens tonight because we're on Thursday. So if yeah, kind of a win-win outcome for Browns fans, either the Bengals get put their seasons on life alert or we get a chance to take first place over the Ravens. If the Ravens lose and we can take first place with the gauntlet of our schedule behind us, things are looking good for the defense to take over and maybe even find a way to secure a home playoff game still. The one element in here that always makes you nervous, uh, they overcame it last week because Harbaugh, I did not, I thought Harbaugh was okay, but I thought Stefanski, I thought Stefanski coached one of his best games. I thought he was so good in that game. Boy, Stefanski and Tomlin is another one. I mean, he's going to have, Tomlin has our number. He has for a long time. Uh, I think he's a very underrated coach. I like Tomlin a lot. You know, that's the one other element here, too. The Steelers will get grimy, they'll get gutty, but the Browns have actually showed so much more toughness, Tony. I'm not really afraid of that bully ball. I don't see that really happening here. In fact, I see the Browns playing with a lot of fight and spit and fire on Sunday. I really do. Yeah, I think so too. We saw it last week, and I think they're going to embrace it even more with the Sean out because you see kind of the message from what the players are saying. It's like we finally for two days had people believing in us, and now they've already jumped all back off. And the defense is saying, hey, Deshaun had three great game, three above-average games this year. The rest of them, we won with bad quarterback play. Yes, we did. I thought so, about that too. Basically, I would actually say a game and a half. The Tennessee game was a complete game from Sean. Right. I thought a half against the Ravens. I I mean, no. Let's go through them. Opening week, he was okay. Rain game, so kind of hard to judge, but he didn't play great. Monday night, no. Tennessee game was a complete game. Yep. Ravens, oh boy. A uh, Niners, eh, uh, Walker. PJ didn't play very well when we won that game. Okay. Yeah. Walker had one pass on that drive, and it was a huge pass against the Colts. Yeah. Okay, yeah. other than that, though, nothing. Seahawk game, no. Arizona game, Deshaun had the deep ball, but it was rough at times in the first half. So I agree. It's one game and a half. So get grimy, get into the mud. And, boy, thank God you got Hopkins as a field goal kicker. You're going to really need it. There's strange weather reports in this game. Some are saying it's going to be clear. Others say it's going to be windy. So it's really hard to gauge where the weather's going to be in this game. Um, but, again, get in the mud. Don't let the Steelers bully, which I'd be worried in past years. I'm not worried this year about that. And then, finally, 
you know, they've been good all year, but you got to say it. Miles B. Miles, Darius Sacks, let's go. Take advantage. Steelers' offensive line is average. It's okay. Yeah. Like, really take advantage of that in this game. Bully them around. Yeah, and it's big. I mean, it's looking like Thornhill might not go, but I'm fine with Rodden McLeod. He's filled in pretty He's been well. Good. He's been yeah. good. Yeah. Denzel's back in full capacity. So defense outside of Thornhill should be a all all systems go. Yep. And really looking like we should be able to shut them down like we did even the first game. I know they put up points, but outside of the Pickens long touchdown oh, and buddy. the turnovers, they didn't really move the ball. The Browns olayed them points. Yeah, from, and from pick six and stuff. By the way, one quick prediction. I'll talk about this a lot more on Sunday morning. I guarantee you Martin Emerson will play well on Sunday. He had a rare bad game against the Ravens. I don't know what ha- – it happens. He just had a bad day. He just could not – He had. it was like on roller skates. He just yeah. had a very, very hard time in that game. Um, don't be surprised if Martin Emerson has a big game this week. He, I've never seen him play a bad game, Tony. I would be shocked if he had back-to-back bad games here. Yeah, tough assignment. Zay Flowers is slippery. Oh, yeah. That guy is tough to contain. Very good. Very yeah. good. But he had a bad day. He I mean, he was, he was literally on – there was a play where I never saw Emerson get frustrated in the game, and he's just like, Jesus. I, yeah. I just cannot avoid it. So all that more to be said, let's recap everything here. I'm feeling good about DTR, but I, I, I'm going to have to see it. So I'm, of course, nervous. Uh, what's your phrase here for this game? DTR. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Luckily, we've got a coach who's notorious for elevating quarterback play. Yeah. If you look at Baker Mayfield, you look at Jacoby Brissett, you look at Case Keenum, you look at one game of Nick Mullins even, he has gotten quarterbacks to play the best they've ever played. I think now with an extended week of practice, with an extended focus on a different game plan, not for Deshaun, but for DTR, with the circumstances, I'm, maybe it's not going to happen right away, but I'm confident that eventually – it will be better than it was with PJ, which doesn't say a whole lot, but I think they can be average at with DTR quarterback. The one thing again, I love that I will give this new regime credit. Um, and it doesn't get said a lot in football. I liked how Barry kept saying how intelligent DTR is. And I like that. I do. I like that in these spots because one would think a, he has a good grasp of the situation he's in and B he also has a good grasp of the playbook and everything else. That means a lot. I do think in these games, intelligence goes a long way to be able to realize certain elements and spots. And not saying we've had dumb quarterbacks here, and I won't even go through who I think is dumb or whatever else. <laughs> you probably guess one guest jumped on a swan at one time. But all that to be said, it's nice to hear that stuff. I think it plays a role. But again, um, hard to put your finger on how it's going to go DTR. Um, I know you kind of feel similar. Believeinland.com will be doing all these different kinds of keys throughout the game. Check out Tony's film review on the Ravens. Check out all of our stuff. We'll be probably talking about a little bit of Guardians, the mysteries of the Cavs and what happened. Boy, oh, my gosh. We can do a whole segment <laughs> on that. Cavs are a weird team. The Browns are easy to read right now. They're playing well. They're feeling good. Go Browns. See you at 9 a.m. for those awful Steelers and our Browns. All right. I know you got to run. The Cavs are the most interesting, befuddling team I've seen in a long time. Yeah. I think they're getting hit with a lot of stuff. I mean, the defense needs to get better, but I think it's more just like a we got to get back to we're focusing so much on funneling guys into the paint that we're just letting three point shooters open. I I see that. And I finally, I mean, they won. Thank God Portland's terrible. What Portland's bad. Um, That was the first team all year. I'm like, boy, this team is. And Grant always kills us, and Grant didn't even kill us uh, yesterday. The lack of a point guard was so apparent in that game. Right, boy, oh boy, they need a point guard. And again, they got away with it. And by and thank you, Evan Mobley showed up. Best yeah. game all year, by yeah. far. He was wonderful. He was. Um, but I, I, I don't know what I, I, I'm finally there. It's like, okay, we're like 10, 11 games in, and like, yeah. It's it's like what are they defensively known for? The middle? Have they been protecting the middle? No. Um, have they been doing anything offensively that makes you get excited? Not really. Uh, I uh, think the offense has looked good. Karras is playing really well. Struess is now, playing Levert's really different. well. No, I like Strew. Like there's individuals. Mitchell, good. Lavert, really good. Excited. Yeah. Struess. Oh my gosh, I like Struess a lot. I get Struess. Niang. He needs to start shooting, but yeah. 
<laughs> like he needs to start making his shots. But you gotta start doing something. Jared Allen, the weirdest hot and cold player so far I've seen. Like yeah. he was so good against the Warrior. I mean, excellent in both Warriors games. Last night, Jared Allen couldn't be. <laughs> he was I terrible. Know. They won, so it didn't matter. Yeah. But it's like he has these games where it's like, God, you just don't even know he's in the game. Um, such a weird. They are. I can go on and on. They are a weird team. Right yeah, now. stay afloat and just figure these things out because they got the talent. We've seen them do it before, so that's right, kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah, all right, real quickly, then I'll let you go. I'm finally there. I, I'm on the fire JB tail end of the bandwagon. I'm not on the first chair. I'm the last chair, but I'm finally starting to be there. Like, yeah, I mean, what, what, why? Like, why is this not yeah. getting picked up? This it, we'll see where we're at at the all-star break because this team's got too much talent to underwhelm that much but he's got to i mean things has got to change because i feel like part of it's just a little bit of bad luck obviously the injuries and like that oh, Kings game i know they were getting a lot of open threes <laughs> but they weren't missing like they just weren't missing no they the the calves that that was the buzzsaw and that's where i'm getting bothered it's like not enough they weren't up enough and again like Thunder. I'm sorry, I'm going to take two more minutes. The Thunder was a good example. It's like, you cannot play fast against the Thunder. You can't. Why are you playing fast? And then the Kings. Kings don't play fast, but as soon as they cross half court, you have to pick them up. Yeah. And I, there's several times, like, Mitchell, why are you in the paint? That's what they're focusing too much on the paint at times yeah. and just letting, because oh. Herder was just getting wide open look after wide oh. open look, and he was hot, and they didn't adjust. So there stuff were, like that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I forget the guy's name, the Croatian on that team, Stepanovic. Vesna, I don't, I didn't even know him until that game, and he hit like four three oh, losses. He was wonderful. Murray was outstanding. Yeah, and that other guy, uh, who's the other guy? The guy who used to play for the Pacers. I can't remember his name now. Um, oh, for the Kings, he's played for the Pacers. White guy. He had a great game. He had a triple double. Um, Stepanovic, is that his name or something? Oh, Sabonis, yeah. Sabonis. Yeah, Sabonis yeah. was wonderful. I mean, yeah, he, and he's just – he's a big bully and not sure we have anyone to match him. Well, it was weird because the Cavs actually – usually he scores a lot. He didn't really score, but they – but, man, Mur, I'll tell you what. It's a shame I, for Iowa fans. M- Murray's really good. Yeah. Um, in fact, nice Murray's, Murray's better than Ivy. Um, kick and play, I – Anyways, all right, I can do a whole thing. I'm very frustrated <laughs> about the Cavs. I, I, yeah, I definitely warranted because slow start, but still November. Luckily, I, I, I I'm with you. Uh, again, they have the Pistons. They have another warm up game, and then yeah. you get to play the Sixers. So enjoy. Better yeah. take care of that stuff. All right, now you got to run. Thanks, buddy. Have yep, a good night. See you. You-